you know, I think as a as a whole, the the, the Titans offense got better, right? But I think if this knocked you off your Traylon dynasty perch, you probably weren't really on it. Um, mm. You know, you were lukewarm at best. Um, and I'm not saying this doesn't have any negative effect on Burks because I think it, it most likely probably does. But you get an excellent vet in Nuke uh, to for, for Traylon to kind of learn from. Um, and it could also allow Burks to play some different positions on the field as he grows into a bit more of a dominant role. Um, he certainly wasn't a polished or finished product coming out. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody necessarily thought that that was the case. Um, you know, he was a kind of that big slot ball in the hands. If you can get him moving across the field, get him moving ball in hands and going. And, and, and you got to see some of that last year enough, at least to get me excited about the, the prospect of Traylon Burks, that this stuff translated into the NFL, but you're going to get nuke. So now nuke can play on the outside, either the X or the Z role, um, for you. Um, so we'll see kind of how that plays out, but I think it can allow Traylon to be a little more versatile and moving him around. And, you know, again, gets a, a nice veteran potential hall of famer presence there in nuke. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I think that's a great point there. The, the versatility, because he did play 20% of his snaps in the slot last season. And I think you can see him getting a little bit more involved uh, with that offense. Offensive coordinator has moved on the quarterbacks or the passing game coordinator is now the offensive coordinator he decided to stick around in Tennessee all off season long he stayed in Nashville he didn't go vacation he just was at the at the facility and training and he admitted that he you know he had a problem with conditioning coming in prior season well overplayed almost asthma you know never had to deal with that kind of activity I guess and, and probably should have been in better shape you know yeah. and, and and has probably learned since that he's every from everything I can read he's mastered the asthma and it's not a it's not a problem <laughs> right. anymore I don't know he's been training all off season and then for him to only play in 11 games did deal with some injuries but had 53 targets 33 receptions 444 yards he was 13th with yards or sorry 33rd in yards per reception in the league with 13.5 and then one of his best features he was 12th overall in yak per reception with right. 5.4 yards and that's that's the kind of stuff that you were seeing in college a, a locomotive with the ball right. in his hands right. get him moving get get him crossing the field which they started getting him doing uh towards this later half and of he the was season. splashing you know right. he was splashing and making big plays downfield 33rd in yards per reception you know right yeah, and I, you know, so I don't know that it's quite the negative that I've seen people making it out to be. Uh, and I'm not also not going to spin it into like, oh, you know, you know, you got to be th that. Oh, it's, it's going to be also so great for Traylon either. I mean, you have to be slightly bummed about the the target share percentage that is most likely going to get knocked and down a little bit. Passing um, volume from, offense with right. Derrick Henry still there. But we're playing dynasty. But, but with the slightly uh, decreased target share, I think you're going to get some extra efficiency there where, you know, you can't key efficiency. on Traylon. Um, and, you know, on, on a weekly basis, I think you could get a little added efficiency. So does that balance out to the where you think the volume might be? I mean, most likely not, but I think it can certainly help. Uh, and like you said, we know this is, isn't a pass heavy offense uh, and everyone's already reeled down on the Titans and Tannehill as a whole. Um, but we've had some really good stretches from Tannehill. Um, he got beat up last year with an ankle in week six or seven and really just wasn't right the whole rest of the season. And the Titans were still knocking on the doorstep of the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I know everybody loves to hate this team and they're going down and it's just like they just keep swinging. In 2022, Tannehill was QB seven, um, 351 points, 22 points per game. He had eight QB one finishes, not the overall QB one, but within the top 12. Uh, 481 attempts in that year and they were still just 30th in the league in passing attempts uh, in that season with 30 uh, 30.1 a game um, but in that 2020 season he provided a top 12 wide receiver and AJ Brown who had 17.7 .7 points a game 70 receptions 1075 yards 11 touchdowns in 14 games uh, so putting up big numbers and, and Corey Davis was the other big dog over there um, and he averaged 13.7 points a game. Now, only wide receiver 30 on the season, but he had a few zeros mixed in there. Um, and he also missed two games. So 92 targets, 65 yards and five touchdowns. Um, so, you know, they're they're. I think there's certainly room for two 
top 24 wide receivers for Tannehill to take there. And I think the, the, the Titans offense, like I said, as a whole, got a little bit better. Is it maybe exactly what you wanted to see from volume perspective from Traylon? No, but I think overall it's probably a decent thing for Traylon to kind of have this happen to him. Um, and so, and you could say, hey, if well, if he wasn't good enough to be great all by himself, then he sucks. And it's like I just I they can't get behind have that. Planned mindset. on getting nuked this well, whole yeah, time, and right? Again, yeah, if you're victory and they waited lapping, so long, telling people like I told you, and it's like, dude, right. come, you didn't tell anybody shit. It's yeah. the softest shit available to be like I told you. You didn't tell yeah. anybody shit. Yeah. All right, they signed another good player. Um, you know. And the people saying that, well, nobody wanted Nuke and the good teams couldn't, you know, didn't sign him. So that should tell you everything you need to know. And it's like, well, they some of them couldn't afford him. I'm sure the Bills wanted him, but probably couldn't figure it out. The Chiefs wanted him, couldn't figure it out, you know. Yeah. And so the Titans, he ended up going to the to the Titans and he maybe he wanted a little extra money. He wanted to get his last little squeeze of cash here. And, and, and we'll kind of see how that plays out. Um, so. You know, is Nuke still elite? I don't know. But I don't think he's washed like some are quick to point out like the coolest guys in the room and jump on that bandwagon as soon as somebody's maybe not quite exactly where they were. Well, he's washed. Uh, and is Burks elite? I don't know. But again, I saw enough last year uh, to, of some of the stuff that we saw in college for me to be very interested. I was interested in Burks before this, and I'm still interested in Burks. If it goes down, if the ADP goes down a little bit, great. If right, Burks is right, right now it's at uh, an RADP all off season is, is Six five. I think you probably. We'll we'll see where that gets to because I want to put Traylon up against some people, but we'll, I'm I'm curious to see how that gets shoved down. It's going to be even better of a deal, I don't right? Know and and and, and that, some but. people are saying, oh, well, buy low. I'll still buy low. And yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I'm still in on Burks. I think he's a good player. I've seen enough, and I think I think he is he is a good player. Burks is wide receiver twenty four in our ADP. Nuke is wide receiver forty going at nine twelve. So we'll see kind of how that uh, Burks going at six five. So we'll kind of see how that. Uh, all plays out uh, in this draft, along with some of those other things that we talked about. Um, you know, 2022, 30th in attempts with 26.8, but there was an interesting split there, home and away. 31.3 pass attempts a game at home and 22.9 pass attempts on the road. Uh, so it became a little more conservative playing it closer to the vest uh, on the road. Uh, which I don't think is necessarily uncommon, but in that 2022 year, they were very balanced on, or the 2020 year where, where they had those, uh, where they had Corey Davis and, and AJ Brown crushing, um, you know, they were very close in attempts there home and away. So, you know, and then just one more thing, if that, if that number can just go up a little bit from, if we can go up to 30, 31 attempts to a game, we saw that they could have two close to wide receiver twos in a wide receiver one and a wide receiver two in that offense. The Eagles were at 31.2 uh, pass attempts per game last year, and they had two top 12 wide receivers on there. Now, are the Titans the Eagles? Certainly not. But if we, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just, I feel like we're so quick to be like, oh, well, tear it all down. There's no way they're going to be any good. It's just confirmation bias. I hated the Titans. Nuke went there. Traylon stinks now. How could he be any good? And it's like, we just need to pump the brakes and just read the tea leaves. The, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle there. And is Traylon could still be the top dog in that offense. And Nuke is the guy who's, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, sparse in week to week play, or it could be the exact opposite. But well, Nuke's got an incentive laden deal, so he's gonna be upset if he's not getting his. You right, know? but so we, we we shall see. But I, I, it it hasn't detracted me from Burks uh, in the least. Uh, and you know, yes, maybe maybe it kind of squashes a little bit of the volume, but maybe we can make a little bit of an efficiency. But I'm not necessarily banking on it to say it's going to be equal. It's probably a little worse, but I think long term, potentially better for. Uh, Traylon Burks. Just so. a two-year deal, and we're playing Dynasty. Right. You made a great point about getting to learn <laughs> from one of the best in the game. Right. Hall of Famer. All right. So. Go Tigers. And there goes Traylon at 6'12". Right. Uh, so he was 6'5". So a little fall. Uh, but not, not much, not, a, not terrible. So How do you think about that? You uh, you want respect, to Respect. Respect to the boys <laughs> in a draft. Are you, I, I got to get Jameson. Right. Over Traylon? Has that been the case? I think I, we've all been on Jameson over. I'm, I'm a big Jameson guy. I don't know if I, yeah, I, I could go either way. That's fine with me. And then DJ Moore or Traylon Burks? Um, I'll take Traylon. Jahan Dotson. I mean, if we're worried about the volume for Traylon, we yeah. got to be worried about the volume for Moore. Yeah. I mean, but Moore's been good with shit. And, well, and Traylon, you know, right? we're, we're hoping, uh, John. We're hoping that the whole Bears offense takes a step forward. And I, I, th I don't think 
you know, Justin Fields is incapable. Uh, he's certainly capable. Uh, so let's kind of see what happens there. And DJ Moore is a little bit of a, you know, I don't mind taking him, but he's he's not as sexy as maybe he once was, but he could score a ton of points this year. He's been good in bad situations, so I don't think it'll get any worse. And if it gets better, then, then DJ Moore would have been the play there. Long term, though, I think Burks is going to shape into a monster here. I like Jamison Williams. So probably take both of those guys over him. And then I'll take DJ Moore over Dotson. Um, yeah. What about uh, Deontay Johnson? Not, you got to push him to the back of all those guys. Uh, I'll take DJ Moore. Yeah. And, and, and then Deontay. I love this seventh round grouping of, of wide receivers. And now we're trickling into the eighth with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think those guys Godwin have been pushed down a little bit. But Debo at 7'7", seven, seven, just a steal. I mean, we can we can be upset about what Debo did last year. Wasn't healthy. He said he's back in, back focused. This offense with Christian McCaffrey now in the offense. Now we can figure out how to do a whole bunch of different things. We can be so differently multiple, whereas you acquired CMC in the middle of the season. You're trying to figure out how to use everybody. Now I feel like you're coming into a whole off scene, the game plan. And I feel like Debo's being very much forgotten. Um, and I love Ayuk. I think he's Ayuk is for sure the wide receiver one over there. But Debo's the, you know, the wide receiver RB two over there. You know, I think he's going to get a nice little combo platter, get back to getting a little bit of the handoff, doing some creative shit. And they're, they're so capable of just making everything look the same and then doing so many different things. And now we can, we can set Debo in the backfield and Christian McCaffrey, and we can work all these things out all off season and really game plan yeah. for a bunch of different things. So I think, oh. I think Debo is being oh. firmly underplayed this year. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, there's only so much you can feed in that offense, but Purdy was figuring out a way to feed a lot of different people. So if you can get Purdy back in the fold there and execute, I think, uh, you know, and they go back to that low, high 29s, low 30s points a game offense, which we were seeing in, in a streak with Purdy there, then the the, the the ceiling is the roof for, uh, for Debo there. And I think he's being forgotten. But uh, back to that group of guys that the Deontay, the Zay Flowers, the Godwin, the Hollywood Brown, I mean, God, what a what a what a great group of wide receivers there. Those are guys that I'm all trading for all off season long to try to acquire and put on my team because their value is a little down. But man, they're proven to be good players. I know people are shit on Hollywood a little bit, but without Nuke there last year through the first like six games, he was wide receiver five, man. He was getting crushed with targets and maybe Kyler comes in at a slow start and we don't exactly, things might be a little rocky over there as the future. We don't exactly know what it holds with Kyler Murray or Marquise, but man, I, if, if Kyler which I think he'll probably most likely be back week one. It might be a little limited. If not, he'll be back maybe by week four. And I think, I think uh, Hollywood will be just fine with Colt McCoy. I think I think Colt McCoy with or Clayton Tune. We'll see what happens with Tune, but I think I think Hollywood with Clayton or with uh, doesn't sound fun. With uh, Colt McCoy will be just fine. Gonna need Kyler gonna to be get back enough, soon. Enough targets there, but we regardless, had a Kyler question. If you I'm want. taking Marquise, and then Holl and then Godwin is just a screaming value right now. Is Baker? Awesome, no, but I think Baker's serviceable and, and good enough to be so excited to get Godwin. And it's probably just one year that you're seeing this. And, you know, it could be purgatory there for Godwin for a little while. But before uh, Brady, there was, you know, there was Jameis. And, you know, Jameis isn't even a starter anymore. So, uh, you know, we've seen it and, and we've seen Godwin be, be productive. He was limping around for half of the beginning of the season last year. So uh, what, what, what was the question that you had? Sorry, we're talking about rappers here for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's see. Who was it? 